please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you will never miss any video from Acure Life Science Foundation. Myself, Dr. Shantanu R. Joshi, a clinician, a pharmacologist and a drug researcher. Dear students, today we are going to see about amlodipine. Amlodipine is from the group calcium channel blockers. If we want to study amlodipine properly, we should first understand the basics of calcium channel blockers. The calcium channel blockers are principally divided into two types. One, cardio selective calcium channel blockers. The example of this group is Varapamil and non cardio selective calcium channel blockers. The example of this group is Nifedipine or Amlodipine. The cardio selective calcium channel blockers like Varabamil has three major effects. They are having negative inotrophic action. It means that they reduce the force of contraction of the heart. They have negative chronotrophic action they reduce the rate of that heart rate reduces and they are having negative dromotrophic action what do you mean by negative dromotrophic action they reduce the impulse of conduction through the nerve through the bundle of ease the right and left branches and the Purkinje's paper all is calcium dependent oh. This negative dromotrophic action also reduces the conduction and is having negative effect on the heart rate. By combining all these three actions, ultimately the heart rate reduces, the force of contraction reduces, force of contraction reduces, the BP reduces, blood pressure reduces. On the other hand, there are non cardio depressant calcium channel blockers. They work on a very different principle. They reduce the entry of calcium ion in the smooth muscles of the vascular bed. The calcium ion is essential for contraction of the smooth muscle. When you block the entry of calcium ion in the peripheral smooth muscles of the vascular bed, the peripheral blood vessels will dilate. The total peripheral resistance reduces. As all of you know, TPR, total peripheral resistance, is a component of systolic blood pressure as well as diastolic blood pressure. Reduction in the TPR will reduce the systolic blood pressure as well as the diastolic blood pressure. Maximum non cardiodepressant drugs like amlodipine, nephedipine work on this principle. They reduce the TPR, thereby they reduce the systolic blood pressure as well as the diastolic blood pressure. If you compare these two type groups, the cardio selective drugs like Varabamil cannot be combined with beta blockers because beta blocker also reduces the heart rate. The calcium channel, cardio selective calcium channel blocker also reduces the heart rate. If you combine them, severe bradycardia or even cardiac asystole might explain. But so far, non cardio depressant group is concerned. Non cardio selective group is concerned. It can be safely combined with beta blockers like atanolol. Rather, they are generally combined with the, this group. It do not produce severe bradycardia or cardiac asystole. Now, we will go into the details of amlodipine. Amlodipine is a long acting and a slow acting drug. The plasma of life of amlodipine is 35 to 48 hours. The peak action of amlodipine is seen after 6 to 9 hours. The drug it keeps the BP at a lower side 
even after 24 hours and this is why that this drug has to be given once in a day it is always compared with nifedipine the problem with nifedipine was that the nifedipine was short acting and immediate acting drug as it lowers nifedipine lowers the bp faster as it is lowering the bp faster it will produce reflux tachycardia the heart rate increases with nifedipine as the bp is reducing very fast reflux tachycardia develops reflux tachycardia is very negative point why because when the heart rate increases period of diastole reduces period of diastole reduces period of perfusion to the heart reduces because heart is the only organ which receives the blood at the time of diastole when the period of diastole reduces perfusion to the heart reduces and it will increase the anginal pain and that's why angina may be seen with nifedipine as it is slow acting and fast acting and in some cases even acute myocardial infarction is noted in some trials this problem of nifedipine is not seen or is less seen with amlodipine because amlodipine is slow acting peak action takes place in 6 to 9 hours and is long acting it acts for 35 to 48 hours and this is the biggest benefit with amlodipine these amlodipine nifedipine are having the suffix of pins amlodipine phalodipine nitrodipine nifedipine lacedipine all pins are non cardiodepressant drugs now dear student we will see the uses of amlodipine amlodipine can be safely used in cases of asthma where you cannot use beta blockers or the use of beta blocker may impose to some side effect of bronchoconstriction beta beta blocker by its beta 2 action will bring about bronchoconstriction which is dangerous for the patients of asthma and copd but if you are using amlodipine amlodipine is a smooth muscle relaxant it will dilate the bronchus it will dilate the peripheral bed and it will be helpful in the patients of hypertension having asthma and copd and that's why in the patients of asthma and copd we safely use we can safely use amlodipine the second and important use of amlodipine is well established use in angina it do not increase the angina but by vasodilation especially by the dilation of the coronaries the blood supply to the heart increases it is having more effect on the arterioles than the venules by dilating the arterioles the afterload of the heart reduces when heart load reduces oxygen demand of the heart reduces and by the dilation of the coronary we increase the supply to the heart the demand is reducing by arteriolar dilation the supply is increasing by coronary vasodilation and that's why demand and supply equation is positively affected demand is reducing and supply is increasing and that's why patient gets benefit in the patients of angina it's a well established drug in hypertension because in hypertension it will bring about the peripheral vaso dilation thereby reducing the tpr when the tpr reduces both systolic blood pressure decreases and diastolic blood pressure reduces because tpr is a component of systolic blood pressure as well as the diastolic blood pressure and that's why currently the most popular drug from calcium channel blockers to reduce the blood pressure that is in antihypertensive is amlodipine it is can be used with the different drugs used in ccf it's a helpful drug in congestive cardiac failure it can be combined with different drugs like ac inhibitors and arbs or diuretics in ccf it can be safely combined with beta blockers it can be safely combined with digoxin it can be safely combined with the drugs like ac inhibitors like enanapril ramipril it can be safely combined with the arbs like telmisartan losartan it do not affect the carbohydrate metabolism 
and that's why it is safe in the patients of diabetes it bring about the peripheral vasodilation and that's why it's a preferred drug in the peripheral vascular diseases like dvd that is diffenous thrombosis it do not affect the renin activity it do not compromise the renal blood flow its nephroprotective properties are well established in the animals as well as in the humans the clinical trials have proven its efficacy and the nephroprotective potential it is comparable with telmisartan then it do not affect the sexual function or affect the male sexual function minimally it can be used in the pregnancy it do not affect the fetal growth or do not affect the negative effect do not have the negative effect in the growing fetus but it should be cautiously used in the pregnancy because of the fact that during pregnancy it is not it do not produce any negative effect but at the end of the pregnancy as it's a smooth muscle relaxant it may interfere with the induction of labor or it may interfere with the contraction of the uterus it may produce the atonicity and may lead to pph and that is one negative point but it is not a serious issue it is not so serious but one should consider this point while dealing with the pregnant state the most important thing about amlodipine it is effective irrespective of the sodium status in the negative sodium status or a high sodium content the arbs and ac inhibitors are of less use but it do not affect the utility the effectiveness of amlodipine same thing with the use of nsaids when you are using nsaids with arbs or with ac inhibitors it affects negatively but the effect of nsaid on the effect of amlodipine is negligible one common side effect of amlodipine is pedal edema in pedal edema it is not due to the retention of sodium in water but it is the more dilation of the arterioles before the capillary network than the arterioles after the capillary network there is more dilation of the pre capillary capillary network than the post capillary network arteriolar dilation is different the arteriolar dilation before the capillary network is higher than the after capillary network the after capillary network it is less and that's why the fluid accumulates at the place this is a negative point about amlodipine but should remember it dear students do remember amlodipine is a prescription only drug we strongly condemn the use of amlodipine by self medication this video is only for the better understanding of the drug for the medical students and the practitioners we at acure life science foundation strongly condemn use of amlodipine as a self medication dear all thanks for watching please like and subscribe so that you will never miss any video from acure life science foundation pune thank you